Today, we're going to take a look at how we can use Llama Index in production with Pinecone. Now, this is an introduction to the Llama Index library that was previously known as GPT Index. We're not going to go into any details on the more advanced features of the library. We're just going to see how to actually use it and get started with it and do that in a way that would be more production friendly with a vector database like Pinecone. Now, for those of you that don't know, Llama Index is a library that helps us build a better retrieval augmentation pipeline for our LLMs. So we would use retrieval augmentation when we want to give our LLM source knowledge, so knowledge from the outside world or maybe some internal database or something along those lines. And that will help us, one, reference that other knowledge so we can add in citations and things like that there. And it will also help us reduce the likelihood of hallucinations. So Llama Index is a library that will support us in doing that. Now, Llama Index can do a lot of things. Not all of those we're going to cover in this video, but the main features of the library include the data loaders that allow us to very easily extract data from APIs, PDFs, SQL databases, CSVs, all of the most common types of data sources. It also gives us some more advanced ways of structuring our data so we can add in connections between different data sources, which is kind of useful. So imagine you have um, a load of chunks of text from PDFs. What you can do is add in uh, connections between those chunks. So the first chunk in your database will be connected to the next chunk with a little connector that says this is actually the next chunk and this is the previous chunk. And they also support things like post retrieval re-ranking as well. So there's plenty to talk about, but first let's get started with a simple introduction to the library. So we're gonna walk through this notebook here. There will be a link to this notebook at the top of the video right now. So the first thing we need to do is install the prerequisite libraries. So go ahead and run that. Now for the runtime here, we don't need to be using GPU. So you can just check if you are doing that or not. It costs money to use GPU on Colab. So you can just set hardware accelerator to none to save that money. Okay, and once we're doing that, what we're going to do is just download a data set. So I'm gonna use the squad, so it's the Sanford question answering data set. Okay, so there's a few things I'm doing here. First, I'm just getting the relevant columns that I need there. So the ID, the context, which is like a, a chunk of text and the title, so the basically the page title where that context is coming from. And then what I'm doing is dropping duplicates. So in the squad data set, you will basically have like 20 contexts and 20 different answers. But those 20 contexts are all identical for those 20 different questions. So you end up with a lot of duplicate contexts in there. But because we are just using the context, we actually need to remove all of that duplication. So that's what I'm doing here. And then we get this, okay? So we have our ID. So it's the, like the document or context ID, the context itself, and then we have where that is coming from. Okay, so we have the first few there are all from the University of Notre Dame Wikipedia page. And in total, we have just almost 19,000 uh, records in there. So LAM index uses these uh, document objects, which you can think of as being basically the context or it revolves around the context of your your data, right? So this, this chunk of text, and it will obviously include other bits of information around that context. So for us, it's going to include the document ID, right? So every document is going to need an ID and this is optional. So we can also add extra info which we can think of as metadata for our context. Now for us, we just have title, but obviously we could add more. This is a dictionary, so we could add, I don't know, something else here, right? And we could just you know, put something, but of course we don't actually need that. So we will remove that, but yeah, you can, you can put as many fields as you like in there. And yeah, let's run that and take a look at one of those documents and see what it looks like. So you can think of this as a core object 
for for LAM index. All right, so we have this document, we have the text, and then if we go through here, we have the document ID and that is your info. Now, embedding, we don't have an embedding for it yet, so we're gonna create that later, but the embedding is also very important because that's what will allow us to search through that data set later on. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually create those embeddings. So to create those embeddings, we're going to be using OpenAI. So for that, you will need to get a OpenAI API key from platform.openai.com. And then you would just put that in here. I have already done it, so I will move on to this. So one step further from our document is what we would call a node. So a node, the way that I would think of this is it's your document object with extra information about that document in relation to other documents within what will be your, your database. So let's, let's say you have the chunks of paragraphs or chunks of text from a PDF. A node will contain the information that chunk one is followed by chunk two. And then in, in chunk two, it will say chunk one was the preceding um, chunk before this. So it has that relational information between the chunks, whereas a document will not have that. So we would need to add that in there. We're not going to do that here. We'll talk about that in the future, but we uh, still need to use the, uh, the nodes here. So we're going to just run this. So our nodes in this case, are basically going to be the same as our documents in terms of the information that they carry, but node is the the object type that we will build our vector database from. So let's run this. I should say here we've, we have set up our OpenAI AI API key. We don't actually need to use it yet. I should have really done that later, but it's there now. So we, we have that ready for when we do want to use it. Okay, so we've just created all of the nodes from the documents. Let's check, take a look at those nodes. Okay. Obviously, we have the same number of nodes as we do documents. Now, we are going to be using Pinecone, which is a managed vector database, as the as a database for our Llama index data. Okay, so to use that, we need to get our API key and environment, which we do from app.pinecone.io, and within there, we. Once you are in app.pinecone.io, you should be able to see API keys over on the left. You'll see something looks like this. Zoom out a bit. And you just want to copy your API key. And also remember your environment here. So I've got US West 1 GCP. So your API key, you put it in here. And here I'm going to put US West 1 GCP. Okay, and after running that, uh, let me walk you through this what is going on here so we initialize our connection to pinecone we create our pinecone index so we're just going to call it llama index intro you can call this whatever you want and the things that we do need to do is one create our index if it does not already exist which if you're running this for the first time it won't and to create that index you need to make sure dimensionality is the same as the text embedding on the 002 model which is the embedding model we're using and that dimensionality is 1536. And we also need to make sure we're using the right metric. We can actually use any metric here. So you can use Euclidean dot product or cosine, but I think cosine is the fastest in terms of the similarity calculation when you're using text embedding R002. Although in reality, the difference between them is practically nil. So you can use any, but I recommend cosine. Now, after that, we will just connect to the index. Okay, so here we're connecting to Pinecone, creating the index, and then connecting to that index. Okay, once that is done, we can move on to uh, connecting. So we've just created our index, connected to it. Now what we want to do is connect to it through the vector store abstraction in Llama index. So to do that, that's uh, pretty simple. Python vector store, and then we just pass in our index. And that's it. That's pretty easy. So this will just allow us to use the other Llama index components with our Pinecone vector store. Cool. So 
I think that is all good. And then we have um, a few more things going on here. So let, let's talk through all of this. Let me make it a little more readable. So yeah, there's a few things going on. So we have basically what we're wanting to do here is create our index, which is this GPT Vector index. So we're basically going to take all of our documents and we're going to take the service context, which is like your embedding pipeline. And we're also going to take the storage context, which is the vector store itself. And this will essentially act as a pipeline around that. So it's going to take all of our documents. It's going to feed them through our embedding pipeline. So this service context, embed all of them and put them all into our vector store. So, I mean, it's not in reality, it's pretty straightforward. Let me just explain that from the perspective of where we're actually initializing these. So storage context from defaults, it's really simple. We're just using our vector store. There are other parameters in here, but we don't need to use any of those because we're just using our vector store with the default settings. With the service context, like I said, this is the embedding pipeline. Again, we don't really need to specify much here. We just need to specify, okay, we're using OpenAI embeddings. Uh, this is going to automatically pull in our API key, which we set earlier on up here. Okay. So it's going to automatically pull in the API key. We do need to set the model. So text embedding order 002 at the time of me going through this is the recommended model from OpenAI. And we have our embedding batch size. So this is one important thing that you should set. Basically, it will embed things in batches of 100. I think by default, the value for this is much smaller. It's 32 or 16 or something like that. So that basically means it's gonna take 16 chunks of text, it's gonna send them to OpenAI, get the embeddings, and then it's going to pass it onto the storage context and upset those pinecone. But, what we've done here is set the embedding batch size to 100. So it's going to take 100, send them to OpenAI, then send them to Pinecone. That means that you need to make less requests. I, I, what is it? It's like um, six times less requests if you set this to 100, which means in essence, you're going to be roughly six times faster because the majority of the wait time in these API requests is actually the network latency. So it's making the request, receiving the request. So by increasing that batch size, it means things are going to be faster, which is, I think, what we all want. So yeah, we, we set that. And then with that, we initialize our service context, right? So that embedding pipeline, or maybe we can even think of it as a pre-processing pipeline for our data. And then we just set everything up together, right? So our that's our full indexing pipeline. We can initialize that. Now this can take a long time and unfortunately alarm index doesn't have like a progress bar or anything built into it, but we can actually check the progress of our index creation. Then we go down to, so our llama index intro here, we can go to index info and then we see the total number of vectors that are in there. Okay. And can we also, you can also see the rate of them being updated as well and you can then refresh and you can see where we are okay so we're at 4.3 thousand and we need to upset how many quite a few actually <laughs> so it's going to take a little while what i might do is just stop that for now and we can just jump ahead and uh, begin asking questions, so I'm not waiting too long for that. But yeah, th that's just one of the unfortunate things with alarm index, but we can kind of get around that by just taking a look in the in the actual Pinecone dashboard at how many vectors uh, we actually currently have in there. Okay, so yeah, let's sub that. Uh, right now, it is very slow to do this with, with Llama index. If you were just wanting to get your vectors and documents in there. I would just use Pinecone directly. It's a much faster, I mean, for what, 18,000, 16,000, whatever that number is, 
you're going to be waiting, oh, I don't know, not long, like maybe a couple of minutes at most, because you, you need to embed things with OpenAI and then send things to Pinecone. Yeah, a few minutes if you, if you set that code up properly. But anyway, that does mean that we wouldn't benefit from the other things that LAM index offers. So in some cases, it might just be a case of being patient. But that LAM index and the embedding process uh, will be optimized in, in the near future so that hopefully that will not take quite as long to actually upset everything. So from here, let's pretend we've upset everything. Now what we want to do is build our query engine. So the query engine is basically, it's just the index and we have this uh, method called as query engine. It basically just reformats that into something that we can begin querying. Okay, so we have our, create our query engine, then we do query engine.query. And our question is gonna be, in what year was the College of Engineering established at the University of Notre Dame? We saw that the first few items in there were talking about the University of Notre Dame. So we would expect that uh, that will work. Why? Okay, let me, so it looks like that hasn't actually initialized the index properly. So, because I kind of stopped it midway through. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna take like a hundred docs quickly. Okay, so it's a bit quicker, let's check. Okay, so we still have those, all those other documents in there. So now let's try that. Okay, and we get the College of Engineering was established in 1920. I'm sure it's one of the first items. It's probably where I got the question from. The universe, ah uh, yeah, so like question four here, I think. If we take a look at that, so data, for, oops, oh, it's a data frame, so it should be my luck. No, three, I'm <laughs> being stupid. Yeah, and we can have a look at the contents. Okay, so it's pulling this information established in 1920. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's how we would set up with uh, LAM index with a vector database like Pinecone. Once we're done with that, all, all we'd want to do is, uh, if you're finished and you maybe you want to ask some more questions, so obviously go ahead and do that. But once you are done and you're not going to use the index again, we delete the index just so that we're not wasting resources there. And we can actually use our, at least if you're on the free tier, you can use that index for something else after that. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to very quickly introduce Llama Index and, and how we would use it. Of course, like I said at the start, there is a lot more to Llama Index than what I'm showing here, but this is very simply an introduction to the library. But anyway, I hope this has all been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.